What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, the word gospel means good news. What good news? The good news that I'm about to share with you is so good, it is almost unbelievable. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Sammy Sabak. So what is the good news? Before I share with you the good news, allow me first to share with you the bad news. Now, why the bad news first? Because a person can only appreciate the good news if he first understands the bad news. So what is the bad news? The bad news, according to the Bible, is that you are guilty of sinning against God. And because you are guilty of sinning against God, the Bible says, listen to this, you are an enemy of God. We read in Colossians 1.21, you are an enemy of God in your mind through wicked works. Now I know you might be thinking, wait a second, I know I'm not perfect, my goodness outweighs my bad. I know I'm a good person. Well, let's find out. Let's see how good of a person you are. Think about this for a minute. If you sin just five sins a day, a bad thought is a sin, and die at the age of 60, you would have committed 109,500 sins. Now these are sins of commission. Then you have sins of omission. Sins of omission are sins you commit by not doing something you should do, such as providing food, water, clothing to the poor, to the needy. In other words, you can lock yourself at home 24-7 and still be guilty of committing sins of omission. We read in James 4.17, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So how many sins of omission do you commit each day? Let's say another five sins a day. Well, that's another 109,500 sins for a total of 219,000 sins, a very conservative number. Now, standing before a holy God on judgment day with over 219,000 sins under your belt, will be a very scary day, to say the least. Besides, do you know how many sins it takes to keep you out of heaven? One sin. And you know what? You committed your first sin when you were conceived. You know why? Because you inherited Adam and Eve's sinful nature. So it's not like you had to be born first and commit your first sin. You already committed your first sin when you were conceived. That's what the Bible says. We read in Psalm 51, 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Now, since you are a sinner, since you are an enemy of God, since you can never be good enough to enter heaven based on your goodness, the Bible says that the penalty or the wages of sin is death. Death in the Bible refers to eternal separation from God. Death in the Bible refers to hell. Now, I know not too many people want to talk about hell, but you know what? Jesus did. Jesus talked about hell more than any other person in the Bible. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells of a time when people will be separated into two groups, one entering into his presence, the other banished to eternal fire. Jesus described hell in great detail in the Bible. Jesus said hell is a place of eternal torment, a place of unquenchable fire, a place from which there is no return, a place of outer darkness. Jesus taught that punishment in hell is just as everlasting as life in heaven. The Bible says hell is a place where people will gnash their teeth in anguish and regret. We read in Matthew 13, 41 through 42, the Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will gather out of His kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The fact that God has declared that we deserve eternal torment for our sins should remind us that our sins are not small at all. My friend, don't minimize your sins before a holy God. And don't take hell too lightly. Yes, hell is real. Hell is a place of eternal, conscious torment. Perhaps you're thinking, well, God is a God of love and would never send me to hell. 
Well, you are right in that God is a God of love, but he also is a God of justice. What if a criminal is found guilty? Would you be outraged if a merciful and loving judge turned a blind eye to injustice and sets the criminal free? Absolutely. Such a judge would be considered unjust and corrupt. Well, if a human judge is required to punish lawbreakers because of justice, how much more must the just and holy judge of the universe punish every sin? If God is to continue being God, he cannot simply set justice aside and sweep sin under the rug. God must deal with our sins decisively and with justice. And God did that. How? That's where the good news comes in. That's where the gospel of Jesus Christ comes in. So what is the good news? What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The good news is that since you and I are sinners, since you and I can never be good enough to enter heaven based on our goodness, Jesus, God of the universe, became a man. He suffered and died on the cross for your sins and mine so that we can be set free. And then he rose from the dead on the third day to be your Lord and your Savior. We broke God's law, yet Jesus paid our fine. Jesus paid it all. We read in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Romans chapter 3 tells us that God put forth Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement to demonstrate his justice. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Because that was the only way that God could righteously not send you and I to hell. Jesus had to take what was due to you and what was due to me. Jesus endured the nails, the thorns, and much more as he hung on the cross. The height of his suffering came when God poured out his wrath on Jesus. In that moment, Jesus endured the full fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. When you understand the cross in that light, you begin to understand how magnificent God's grace is. So why did Jesus die on the cross? Jesus died on the cross because he loves you and wants to save you. In 1 John 4, 8, we read, God is love. The Bible says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Listen to these wonderful scriptures. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And one of my favorite scriptures, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. The cross is an amazing display of God's love and mercy. Without the cross, you cannot cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is your only ticket to heaven. Speaking of heaven, the Bible says heaven is where the glory of God is. Heaven is a place of no mores. We read in Revelation 21, 4, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. No more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. Heaven is forever. The best thing about heaven is the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will be face to face with the Lamb of God, who loved us and sacrificed himself so that we can enjoy his presence in heaven for eternity. So my friend, you're left with two options. Stay in your state of depravity and be eternally punished or submit to the Savior and accept the gift of salvation. How can you be forgiven of your sins and spend eternity in heaven? You need to repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm Sammy Sabah. Thanks for watching. God bless you.